You are now watching the Queen Chama. So hey guys, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're going to be doing another compilation video of some very hot topics. This is a series in which I take a few trending topics, combine them into one video, and briefly discuss my thoughts and opinions on them, being that I don't feel like they may need a full-blown breakdown. So lately, we've been having a lot of good content to discuss, and I feel like there's a lot going on within these past few weeks. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So topic number one is Doja Cat announcing that she is tired. So Doja Cat is a very successful and talented rapper, singer, and songwriter. She is from Los Angeles, California, and she is currently 25 years old. I really like Doja Cat as an artist. Although she is very weird, it actually works for her in a good way. I know I did a video on her in the past dragging her for some of her past actions, but I'm going to be fair enough to say I've kind of overcome that because she has won me away with her artistry, her talent, and how much she's blown up as an artist in such a short amount of time. From listening to her music, this girl is probably the most versatile female rapper out right now. She can do pop, hip hop, pretty much any genre. And she has flows for days. Her verse on the 34-35 remix with Ariana Grande and Meg Thee Stallion is like, wow. The song concept is very sexual, but that notwithstanding, she did her thing. I have a lot of her music in my phone and I feel like she's been working really, really hard to establish herself as an artist. Her weird, quirky, and outlandish personality really works for her just because she doesn't really fit the mold of the average female rapper. Like, she can do that, but she can also come with more than just Birkin bags, how good her cooter cat is, and how much money she makes. And as much as I like those types of songs as well, I truly can acknowledge and appreciate someone who can be a front runner in music while still having something that differentiates her from the norm. So Doja Cat took to Twitter to express how unhappy she was about being tired. She said, I'm just tired and I don't want to do anything. I'm not happy. I'm done saying yes to mother efforts because I can't even have a week to just chill. I'm never not working. I'm effing tired. Alex is getting old. He's 60 68 years old and I can't even be there for him. I want to be done. She then says, it's not anybody's fault but mine anyway. I just keep agreeing to ish I don't want to do in the future and it's my own dumb butt fault. And then I'm too tired to put any effort into this ish because I'm so run down from everything else. And then one of her followers told her just to not do one of her next concerts that she has upcoming and she replies that she has to do it. I'm assuming because there's probably some type of contractual agreement. There's some money involved. People have already paid money for tickets and she has to fulfill her obligations obligation so she can't just not do the concert and then she ends by saying that she just does not care anymore so doja seems to be very physically exhausted probably from overworking herself as an artist and this is something i can resonate with because although people see the glitz and the glam of being an artist or an influencer i feel like people underestimate how much work it actually is to be a self-made entrepreneur i know we often have debates about nine to five workers versus entrepreneurs but if you ask me one of the biggest differences is not about earning potential it's not about whether you have a valid occupation and it's definitely not about the benefits you can receive from the job but it's simply the amount of time that you're actually working. I feel like as an entrepreneur or an influencer or an artist you are always working. You don't get days off. You don't get paid vacation time. I feel like as a YouTuber and influencer I'm working 24-7. To create content for people to consume as a way of living for myself you can't really just stop. I always have to be up to date on what is trending. You're always in front of the computer straining your eyes, editing, reading articles. On top of that you want to look good so when it comes to hair or makeup, outfits, pictures, promotions, brand deals, sponsorships, fans. Like you have to look a certain way to maintain your image, which also comes with another set of obligations. So I completely think that Doja Cat being exhausted is pretty reasonable. I mean, this is why we have to continue to have these conversations about mental health because physical health is one thing, but the toll that it can take on someone mentally is also important. And when you're in front of thousands or even millions of people, you're scrutinized for everything that you do. And that does play a part in people not having the desire to even work at their craft anymore, even if they have a passion for it. To me, Doja seems to just be overworking herself and it sucks because she can't even take a one week break. Even if I was to take a one week break from doing what I do, it would affect the income that I get. It'll affect my algorithm. It also affects people actually sticking around to watch my content because everyone is expecting me to report on things as they happen. That's why sometimes I'm just really late with my stories because I try to give myself a break. When it comes to any type of worker, especially those in the limelight, please take breaks. Don't work yourself into a pulp because at the end of the day, we are all human. I hope Doja Cat can finish out her obligations and then take a vacation away from this because it's really necessary 
necessary to perform at the optimal level, as well as having a sense of peace and serenity within yourself as a human being. Now, the second story is about Queen Nyjah feeling threatened after an encounter that she had. Now, Queen Nyjah is a singer and songwriter from Detroit, Michigan, and she got her start as a YouTuber. She was a part of the family channel Chris and Queen with her ex-husband, and I feel like out of everybody from that era of family channels, Queen is the only one that is still relevant and made good use of her opportunity. Now, I have dragged her in the past for being colorist and for some of the choices that I felt like were very unnecessary, but again, I feel like Queen Nyjah has honestly used her blessing correctly. You don't see her being crazy, problematic, or even trending for things that she used to get dragged for. I feel like she's the type of influencer that was called out for certain things, took the lesson, and has made better choices moving on. I actually do enjoy her music, and I think Queen is on the right path with her career. Now, because Queen does what she does, she is primarily a singer now and less of a YouTuber. She has a huge following and a large mass of fans. And unfortunately, this is one of the downfalls of being famous and well-known. People threatening you, people attacking you, and people just going above and beyond to make you feel uncomfortable. So Queen Nigel took to Twitter to detail a recent situation that she had with a man. She says, okay, I'm getting my gun license ASAP. This is the second time a man has walked up to me and gotten in my space to make weird conversation. I hate that I automatically get nervous because of the stories of women who rejected someone and got killed. She then continues to say, so I'm waiting on a food order and he walks right up to my window while it's down and says, orange sweater, I noticed your shoes match your sweater. Like, what the hell? It's crazy how dangerous it is to be a woman. Now, I'm not completely sure if this situation is motivated by the fact that she is a celebrity and well-known, but nonetheless, it's still very alarming. I think Queen makes a great point. To be a woman these days is actually very, very scary, especially when you're alone. It's like this level of vulnerability that people can sense and literally see you as prey for an attack. I'll say this, if your state or country allows it, get your gun license. I recently got mine and honestly, please don't try me because the way how we have seen so many stories of women being attacked for rejecting men, I'm just not here for it. Stories like this sound like something out of a movie, but it's really real life. I know y'all have been seeing the story about the 19-year-old Latina woman named Maya Marcano, whose body was recently found and the lead suspect, who was a man who was rumored to be trying to pursue her, committed the S word once the story went viral and her rejecting him led to her passing. So it's scary. It truly is scary to be a woman. We're looked at as an easy target for so many sick people. Ladies, protect yourself the best that you can. I know you listen to the stories on YouTube, you see it in the news, and you think it'll never be you, but just walking from the grocery store to your car in the parking lot or taking the bus or train to work or even being a college student on campus, walking home to your dorm or apartment from the library, anything can happen. And this example with the situation with Queen Nyjah shows that no matter your celebrity, you are never exempt from these types of threats or feeling uncomfortable. Now, the third and final story is the internet's reaction to Bia and Lotto's performance at the 2021 BET Hip Hop Awards. So the show aired on Tuesday, October 5th, and I actually watched it from start to finish. And I watched it because I really wanted to see the people who won, but I also wanted to see the performances and definitely the ciphers. Y'all know I've been working on my music. I keep previewing songs at the end of all of my videos, and I really, truly appreciate the positive feedback. I definitely go through and heart all of the comments that y'all give me about my music, like all of them. And let's cross our fingers and hope that for next year's BET Hip Hop Awards, I'm actually one of the people on the cypher because I'm not gonna lie, a lot of those verses on the cyphers were subpar. Tierra Wack killed it. She probably had the best verse on there and I advise y'all to actually go back and really listen to the bars that she had because I was blown away. Kid Ken, the first openly gay rapper to be at the BET Hip Hop Awards cypher, he killed it. I was like, damn, like he's rapping better than some of these bang bang gang gang ski ski rappers as I like to call them. I liked Lakia's verse. There were a few male artists that did a good job too, but for the majority, a lot of those verses were ass, trash, and no gas. Like, the amount of men that talk about female rappers only rapping about one thing, like they don't just rap about the same stuff as well, it's just confusing me. But that's a topic for another video. So anyway, what sent most social media users into a frenzy were the comments about two of the main performers for that night, Bia Bia and Big Lotto. Both ladies were headlining performers for the show. Bia is a rapper out of Medford, Massachusetts, and she is currently 30 years old. Bia is most known for her song, Whole Lot of Money, which was recently remixed by Nicki Minaj. Lotto is a rapper out of Atlanta, Georgia, and she is currently 22 years old. She just recently dropped her song, Big Energy, that was met with mixed reviews by social media. By the way, I like the song. It wasn't that bad to me, and I appreciate the effort of trying something different than her usual music. Now, starting with Bia, I just really love everything about how she's coming up right now. Like, honestly, I feel like she's the best new upcoming female artist right now. Her song, Besito, is fire. Like, I've had that song on repeat all week, like, probably even longer than that. I feel like she brings something different different and she has a distinct look. To me, Bia will continue to dominate, but her performance at the BET Hip Hop Awards was a bit lacking, and I am really in full support of Bia 
club, but I can agree that she didn't really do much during her performance. I will say that as a rapper, I don't think rappers are seen as full-blown performers. I mean, they rap, but even part of being a performer is actually engaging with the crowd. And I feel like most of what she did was just laying down on that couch and not moving from center stage. People were saying that the best part of the performance was when Lil Jon came out and was hyping her up. And the good thing about Bia is that she takes all of this criticism in a very constructive way. She says that she will implement what people are saying and do better, and that's great. Honestly, this was her first big time performance. I don't think I had this high expectation that she was gonna blow people away. So watch, the next time she performs, I'm almost 110% sure that she'll have something way better, way more engaging, and really enamor the stage with her presence. Now, moving on to Lotto's performance, honestly, I didn't think it was terrible, but I just feel like she was doing things that are out of her element at this current moment. She's clearly not a dancer. She's clearly not the type to do a full-blown choreography, and her voice is so distinct that her rapping outside of the studio is gonna sound very different than her live. I think a lot of performers got to work on that. Breath control. This is something that I also struggle with. I'm from Philly. We talk super duper fast, so I be running out of breath, and as an artist, you're gonna run out of breath if you don't start practicing breath control. That was the major thing for Lotto. Her voice sounded a few octaves lower than the song, and it made her seem like she was uneasy with her own song. I think because she's just a hard rapper that doesn't necessarily perform like a Doja Cat or a Nicki or something, it was just clashing. But I do feel like it's something that can be rectified. If she works on breath control, doing what's comfortable for her, she can definitely pull out a full-blown performance. I think what has happened is because a lot of female rappers are just seen as sexual caricatures, as soon as you try to do something that is not twerking or shaking your ass on stage, that's where the difficulty comes in. Anybody can shake their ass, but not everybody can really be a good performer. And we're starting to see that accrediting talent to being able to shake your cheeks doesn't prevail when it actually matters. If you look at some of Lotto's concert footage, a lot of it is twerking and jumping up and down on stage. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but I don't think she's used to doing anything different. So she just has to practice more and I'm sure she can get better at it. Lastly, I just wanted to touch on constructive criticism because I feel like the internet struggles with this. I remember when I first previewed some of my music, there were people who were actually saying, Chama, it's good, but you just need to learn how to perform and actually have some character while rapping. And then there were some people that were just being downright mean and hating, saying you suck, you should stop, this is not your lane, you're trash, stick to what you do. And that is not constructive criticism. Some of y'all are literally haters, like just be real with yourself. Either way, I took all of that, went back to the booth, changed up some of my beats, and to see a lot of y'all actually saying like, this is actually good, this is actually hard, please drop the music. It's really good motivation for me. And it's really good motivation when your criticism is actually constructive. When you give criticism, give an opinion, yes, but you don't have to be mean or bash anybody. Tell them where they can improve, give an example of what you would do or change, encourage and appreciate the parts where someone is actually doing well. That's what constructive criticism is. A lot of times people on the internet try to camouflage their opinions as constructive criticism and it really just be a whole bunch of hating ass bitches, like just be real. But nonetheless, I see both of these ladies, Bia and Lotto, actually improving moving forward and giving themselves room to grow as an artist. Both of them are still considered kind of new, so I think that only time will tell where they develop to and I'm here for it. I want to see both of them succeed. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. Y'all know my Instagram page is still messed up, so you know I have a new one. Please follow me on there. I will pin it down below in the comment section. Don't forget to follow me on all of my other social media networks and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Can I, hold no, I can't do that. False claiming bitches, but all I said is truth. Yeah. Never heard of you when they asked, I said, who's that? Uh, Mission in the motherland and it will push a roof. Y'all hoes be swearing y'all get in the bag, but it must be a joke. Correct me, Mick. Y'all hoes be swearing y'all music is hot, but I'll fry your ass on the skill mm -hmm. lick. Y'all hoes be swearing y'all running the game, but couldn't even play in the scrimmage. Hi, she forgot I'm it, so we about to play tag. Bam, whole lot of chummers on their ass.